Hey everyone, it's James Reeves with TFB TV and buying guns can be hard. Sometimes you have to do a lot of research. You got to go watch YouTube videos, read a bunch of stuff, try to compare specs. And sometimes the manufacturers just make it easy on you by letting you know what the new hot shit is just by dropping an X in front of the model number. And that's what we have today. The Beretta 92 X. How do you know? that this is the newest version of the Beretta 92, which was first introduced in 1975. Well, you know it because it's the 92X. All kidding aside, what we have today is a review of the Beretta 92X Compact, which just came out in July 2020. You know when there's a new compact handgun or a concealed carry handgun from a big manufacturer, I'm gonna wanna get hands on it immediately and take it to the range right away for my Prima Noctis. And that's what I did with a Breda 92X. I'm going to cut to the chase. Would I carry this gun? Probably not. But, but I like this gun. And I'm going to tell you why I like this gun. And I'm going to make suggestions to you on perhaps why you may like to carry it, even if I don't. That's the great thing about guns. We can disagree without hating each other, right? Right? 1911 guys, right? So I'm gonna lay the foundation with a little bit of general info about the Beretta 92 design. Then we're gonna talk about the specs of the 92X Compact. Then we're gonna talk about my impressions on the range. Finally, I'm gonna wrap it up with my thoughts about carrying this gun, we'll say. Because the Beretta 92X is the most recent version of the Beretta 92, let's take it back to 75 and talk about the Beretta 92 what it is, and why it may or may not lend itself to be a concealed carry handgun. As I mentioned, the Beretta 92 was designed in 1975 and is one of the great classic Wonder 9s that remains in production and viable as a defense tool to this day. It quickly became recognized as a reliable pistol thanks to two Beretta-specific inventions. First, the Beretta 92 borrowed the 180-degree ejection port from the Beretta M1923, which means that its ejection reliability is excellent, unlike most conventionally designed handguns that have smaller ejection ports where the casing can only eject out of one side or the other, of course, typically the right-hand side, unless you're a Walther P5 and some idiot designed you and you eject out of the left-hand side. Unlike those, the Beretta 92 can eject pretty much from any angle, and it also makes the gun easier to clear. Second, the Beretta direct feed design to the Beretta 92. That is, there's no true feed ramp between the magazine and the chamber. This, of course, increases feed reliability because the conical or flat portion of the bullet, whatever it might be, doesn't need to go up a ramp. It just gets shoved straight into the chamber. And perhaps the crowning moment of recognition for the reliability of the Beretta 92 was when it was selected by the Joint Service Small Arms Program to replace the aged out 1911 in 1985 after winning two trials, one in 1980 and one in 1984. The Beretta performed impressively to say the least when it won these trials. In the 1984 test, for example, the Beretta 92 went 1,750 mean rounds between stoppages, while the 1911 could only muster 162 rounds before that piece of shit jammed. To be fair, that means the 1911 was still 99.4% reliable, not bad, but the Beretta had a staggering 99.94% reliability rating in the 1984 Army tests with only 20 failures over 35,000 rounds. And what's the most important characteristic of a carry gun? Of course, reliability. So the Beretta 92X Compact already comes from a pretty rich pedigree of reliability and durability, and the design's been proven over time but it's also been continuously improved. The 92X, the most recent iteration, has a few designs that you didn't find on your old school 1975 
Beretta 92. So let's talk about what's new with the 92X series. Well, it uses the Vertec grip, which has been around on a few Beretta 92 models. The Vertec style grip accommodates more shooters than the larger grip of the traditional 90 series, and it's a little bit more vertical. Most people find it similar to, say, a 1911 grip, and most shooters seem to prefer it. However, the 92X introduces these new rigid wraparound polymer grips, which allows for proper fitment for larger hands or smaller hands. Another new feature in the 92X series are the excellent and replaceable, notice I'm emphasizing replaceable, combat sights. It's got Hackathorn style sights that are outstanding, blacked out rear sights with a very bright, high visibility orange front dot. But you know what? If you don't like it, unlike prior iterations of the Beretta 92, you can go ahead and change out that front sight. Because this time the front sight, thank God, isn't milled into the slide. It's got what Beretta refers to as an enhanced fire control group, and I couldn't really tell much of a difference between the 92X's trigger and the traditional Beretta 92 trigger, but to be absolutely fair to the 92X, I didn't compare them side by side. What I will say is I got about a 10 pound trigger pull on double action, which is, I would say, pretty light for a double action trigger, and it's relatively smooth. On single action, I was getting between four and three quarters and five pounds of trigger pull. And of course, the single action pull is much better than the double action pull. The 92X series also uses an extended magazine release that works very well. It also employs what Beretta refers to as a universal slide design, which is convertible from the F series, that is the safety with the decocker, to the G series, decocker only. In other words, the end user can change this from a gun with a slide mounted safety, or you can just go no safety, which is what I would prefer, and use the decocker only or G kit. The 92X also has a beveled magazine well that makes mag changes so much easier. You also have your choice of either a nice clean classic dust cover, which I like for a concealed carry gun, or you can get a three slot built in Picatinny rail if you roll that way. It also has excellent checkering on the front and the back strap. So I just set the wave tops between the changes from the prior iteration of the traditional 92 series to the more ergonomic, a little bit more developed, more end user friendly Beretta 92X. And I think all of these changes are good, but does it a good carry gun make? We'll talk about that after we go over the specs real quick. The Beretta 92X is a 9mm with a capacity of 13 rounds plus 1. It has an impressive barrel length of 4.25 inches, an overall height of 5.25 inches, an overall length of 7.75 inches, an overall width, according to the website, of 1.5 inches, and weight unloaded, once again, according to Beretta, of 27.2 ounces. As you probably gleaned from the context, we're about to go there. The MSRP is a whopping $799, woof. Before you ask, yes, the Beretta 92X is compatible with all prior Beretta 92, let's say, legacy magazines. So you're gonna be able to get as many mags as you want on the cheap. You can get extended magazines, 13 round, 10 rounds. It's going to be relatively easy to find magazines for this gun, and they're gonna be inexpensive. The front sights are compatible with the Beretta M9A3, and the grip panels are also compatible with the M9A3. It shares internal parts compatibility with legacy Beretta 92 series compact pistols, and it has a round trigger guard. The trigger guard thing always kind of cracks me up when it comes to Beretta 92s because you have some people who just swear by the squared off trigger guard and they think that that's the way to go. And then there are people that like the aesthetic of the rounded trigger guard and why do you need your support hand to be on your trigger guard and blah, blah, blah. And they go back and forth. I really don't care all that much either way, but I do like the aesthetic of the smoother rounded off trigger guard. It's also got a chrome lined barrel with a target crown. Here's that front and back checkering on the grip frame again, and a closer look at the combat high visibility sights with dovetailed fronts, unlike the older Beretta 92s. It has a sight radius of 5.75 inches. The guns use a steel trigger and magazine release, not plastic. The 92X series field strips very quickly, just like every legacy Beretta 92 copy. I'm pretty fast at breaking one of these bad boys down. I'm not sure if I'm Jet Li fast. It's my 
thank God, reminding me that I'm too old for this reviewing guns on YouTube shit. I also have to mention that the Beretta 92X is 100% made in the USA, in the great state of Tennessee. Before I get to my range review, let's talk about some shenanigans that I saw with the specs. The Beretta 92 is listed at 27 ounces, which I was like, holy wow. That's incredible. This gun only weighs three ounces more than my Glock 19. Look at that, there's, there's a Glock 19, Gen 3 Glock 19 with a Gen 5 magazine on the scale coming in right at 24 ounces. Amazing that this Beretta 92X is only three ounces heavier, but it uses a lot of steel components and more importantly, an alloy frame. So I break out my scale and it turns out that liar, liar, pants on fire Beretta your numbers are not even right. This gun weighs 28 ounces without the magazine in. And then once you add the magazine, you're looking at like 30 ounces, tick over 30 ounces, maybe even 31. I don't remember, even though I just recorded this B-roll like five minutes ago, but whatever it says right there. Now something in favor of the 92X dimensionally, they listed on the site, they say, I'm gonna get my measure here out again because uh, on the site they say one and a half inches. The only spot I could really find a one and a half inch width was at the controls. And you can see, you know, those controls are, are pretty chunky. But I measured the slide, which I'm doing right now. And I mean, there it is, 1.1 inches, which is actually pretty thin. And now I'm gonna measure the fattest part of the grip, which is right here at the palm swell. That's like right where the Beretta logo is. And just like I measured earlier, that's about 1.4 inches. So even at the grip, like the fattest part, the gun's really only 1.4 inches. Is this a thin gun? No, not really. It's a little bit of a hog, but as far as double stack nine millimeters go, it's not bad. So it's actually thinner than you might expect. Now that said, it still doesn't conceal all that well. I think between the butt size, the width of the grip, the weight. If you're a full bore metrosexual like me, you can see here with my, my skinny 5'11 jeans, you try to carry this appendix carry and people are going to think that you are tucking the weirdest boner in your waistband. On the other hand, it does do a pretty good job disappearing, not necessarily small back because I know that that's passe right now at this point, but what I like to call like butt cheek carry, you know, like about four o'clock or even three o'clock carry, you might do all right. Now the butt, is a little bit big. You've got the J-Lo factor there, but it's just the right size for an average, I'm six feet tall, 180 pounds. I can grip this just about right whenever I put a magazine in there. As you can see there, it's uh, you've got a pretty good, it's almost like a full-size grip, making this gun actually quite enjoyable to shoot between the weight, between it being kind of a fat hog, and being able to get a full grip on this pistol, it is, in fact, very comfortable, even fun to shoot, unlike many compact carry options. As far as taking it to the range goes, as I mentioned earlier, I couldn't really tell that much of a difference between the OG Beretta 92 trigger and this new 92X, like enhanced fire control group or whatever. I'm not even sure if Beretta is advertising this as a better trigger. But look, that's not a bad thing because the Beretta 92 has a good trigger. What I will say is if you're used to carrying striker fired handguns, this is gonna be a little bit of a mind frig for you. You know, like you've got all this in single action, you've got all this take up. But once you hit that wall, you get, boom, a nice crisp five pound break. And now that I'm sitting here listening to myself, it sounds like I'm describing a Glock trigger, but it's not like that, truly. It's a different type of trigger and it actually took a little bit of getting used to because I primarily fire striker fired handguns. So these were the first shots out of the normal, uh, or the um, mag that comes with it, 13 round mag, pretty slow fire. First shot was double action. I took my time on it, felt good. Definitely a cleaner f double action shot than like a regular stock 92. Um, this was a little bit more rapid fire. This grip angle to me and just the way the checkering is back in, I want to say maybe like 2000, 2001, when Beretta came out with the Vertec, I was in the first like armors course slash, it was either instructor class or just like a shooting class that they did, a promo thing. Um, 
and I liked it then. One of the big things I have with this, you know, shot this competitively in the Marine Corps, was actually issued it and carried it regularly in the Marine Corps. Um, liked it, but just, it was a big, it was, it was a big fat check and I just couldn't really, you know, felt good about it. This, I would feel a lot more comfortable firing at speed, single-handed. Of course, it does have some interchangeable grips and whatnot. Overall, um, I would say if y'all was gonna get a Beretta, just off the top, I'm, I'm liking this angle and this, uh, this grip a lot better. But once you get used to it, very shootable, eminently accurate gun. This is a gun known for its accuracy. <laughs> There we go. There's two mags right there from 12 yards or 13 yards, I think we're shooting at. Um, my, my first group was more like this, where this pink tape was, really to the left, kind of wider. I guess when you're used to firing striker-fired guns, it does take a little bit of adjustment, but not much. I mean, this is like four mags, four or five mags at most uh, through this thing and already getting pretty tight groups. It's getting tighter and tighter every mag. So that's what she said. Wow, I'm saying, I'm talking about things getting tighter a whole awful lot. I'm gonna go back to the firing line now. The Hackathorn style sights are excellent. Blacked out rear sights and then the high visibility front orange sight. So I like them. You also have a front sight blade that's thick enough where it's noticeable, but it's also thin enough that it allows for kind of some precision alignment within the rear sight. The excellent in its class sight radius of the gun also helps. Some people have called the grip texture aggressive. I happen to like the grip texture on these new plastic grips and on the front and the back strap. So I guess if you use a lot of jergens on your hands, then maybe you're going to find this to be slightly abrasive. As far as double action triggers go, I would say that this is one of the better ones. Controls are excellent, as you might expect with any 92 series. Slide lock, slide release, it's always easy to access. You've got this shelf that's quite prominent without being too prominent. Not a big fan of the slide mounted safety. I would go with the decocker and I would get one of the low profile ones. I believe Wilson Combat makes some. You have a few other manufacturers that might be making low profile decockers. Maybe go with like a left hand side only to cut the profile of this gun down a little bit if you're gonna carry it. No look mag changes are really easy with this beveled magazine well, which is nice. I like that feature a whole lot. So this gun shoots well, this gun's reliable. Is it a little heavy? Yeah. Is it thicker than other options you have out there? Yes. And it even has a lower capacity, which I'll get to in just a second. But you do have a lot of people out there who are saying, okay, is it concealable? Yeah, it's concealable. Sure, it's thicker than the competition. Sure, it might be heavier than the competition. But if I can shoot it better than the competition, and if it's going to be reliable, then this is the gun that I'm going to get. And I wouldn't fault you for that. Big breath in, indicating that I'm about to say, but but you're talking about a 13 round capacity. This gun seems to be larger, it's certainly heavier, and it seems to be larger than my Glock 19. My Glock 19 seems to be thinner than this gun. It seems to have a little bit, just barely. I mean, they're almost the same size, but it seems to have a little bit smaller footprint, but I get 15 plus one instead of 13 plus one. Now, to make the comparison even a little bit more dynamic, if you will, then look at a SIG P365XL, which has a 12 plus one capacity, but is probably half the size of this big son of a bitch. As I said, I'm not sure I would carry it. I don't think that I would abandon, say, my Glock 19, which I find to be a smaller, lighter gun with greater capacity. I'm not sure I would abandon that for the Beretta 92X. Or, you know, hell, you can get the SIG P365XL, which is a much smaller gun, much smaller, but you're only giving up a round of capacity. But that said, I like this gun. I like the reliability of this gun. I like that it's accurate. I like that the controls are easy to use. I like that mag changes work. Truly, you're getting full-size gun performance in a more compact package. And if that sounds good to you, I would even look past the 799 MSRP and pick this thing up. This is a good pistol. If you're still on the fence, I'll try to push you over this way. I'll make this last argument and I'll leave it at that. Who would this gun be good for? I would say people who want additional degree of safety over a striker fired handgun or for women or people of smaller stature. Let's talk about the safety people first. 
Safety people understandably don't want to catch a case of what they call Glock leg, right? Where you have a light striker fired trigger that'll accidentally discharge and, you know, put a slug in your calf or something like that. I get it, makes total sense to me, and that's why hammer fired DASA guns are so attractive because. Even if you convert to a G model, which I would recommend you do. I don't really like slide mounted safeties, especially they're kind of awkward to get to. If you need to get the gun in fire, you need maybe a little bit more practice. I feel than a frame mounted safety. They're also, uh, I, in my opinion, easier to accidentally engage and they add a lot of width to the slide. So I would go with a low profile G or a D cocker because you have on the front end, a 10 pound trigger that's going to act as your safety. That's quite an amount of force to get that first shot going, but once you do that, of course, the gun's gonna cycle, it's gonna cock the hammer, you let it reset, and at that point, you've got a five pound trigger pull until you're done for the day. Another feature some people like about hammer-fired guns, and this is a little bit controversial, is that you get second strike capability. So if you pull the trigger and it makes the loudest noise in the world, and that is a click instead of a bang, you can pull that trigger one more time, and maybe if you have a hard primer, that'll set it off. Of course, that's controversial. Some people say if you have a click instead of a bang, then you need to tap rack bang immediately, get the round out of there, but it's something to think about. Some people also like hammer-fired guns because whenever you're reholstering, especially if it's appendix, you can kind of put your thumb on the rear of the hammer. And right now I'm pulling this trigger as hard as I can and I can't overcome the force of my thumb and the hammer so I can keep my thumb on the hammer and then put this gun wisely right next to my junk. I don't get it. It's like what I always say, I call it a index carry because you do it long enough, you'll have no PP. In any event, that's another bonus for the safety crowd out there. I really encourage people to rely more on design, what I would call design safeties like this, like a hammer fired double action, single action gun with a decocker, instead of say something like a slide or a frame mounted mechanical safety that requires additional practice to get used to. And yeah, it makes you feel good if you have it in your purse or whatever, but you just hope you have the frame of mind whenever you actually need to use it to disengage that safety. And that's why I like this because it doesn't really take any thought. All you do is just pull the trigger till it goes pop. Finally, I would say people like Elderly women, people of smaller stature, this is a good gun. It's customizable. It's got that thinner grip that I mentioned earlier. Because of that weight, it really does soak up the recoil. The high visibility sights are good if you have poor vision. And one thing that I think gets overlooked is the slide, especially if you have the hammer cocked. The slide on a Beretta 92, because of the way the locking device works in this gun versus the typical Browning tilting barrel, it's much easier to rack the slide. You've seen all these guns that have come out lately, like say the, uh, the Shield EZ, the Smith & Wesson M&P EZ, where they make the gun easier to rack. Here, with the Beretta 92, it's already easy to rack because you don't have a tilting barrel. And again, the controls are a lot easier to use, and I think that that lends itself to people who might not have the physical strength or dexterity to operate these controls. So that's it. In summary, would I carry this? Probably not. Do I think you should carry this? Yeah, I think if this sounds good to you, pick one up. These are fantastic little pistols. Thank you, Beretta, for sending one to me. Thank you to you guys for watching. It means so much to us. Thank you to our sponsors, Federal Ammunition, Blue Alpha Gear, Ventura Munitions. Even though they're totally cleaned out, they're still the best ammo store in the world and my good buddies at Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. That's it for me, everybody. Take care.